It's not about motivation. Winners need discipline. Wake up and win today. Discipline comes from within. Boxing King Media in association with the Riyadh season. Uh, Mr. Kevin Larana, all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, Kevin, uh, how you doing, man? Good and you, man. Thanks for having me on your channel. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Uh, it's Saturday evening. We're literally a few weeks away from, you know, you fighting in Saudi. I know nothing's officially announced. Are you able to say anything or you've got to wait till it's officially out there? Yeah, I've got to wait till it's officially out there, but obviously it's pretty common knowledge. 8th of March, Saudi Arabia. So I'm really excited for that opportunity. And obviously we're doing the work back here at home and uh, ready to go showcase our skills that side. I was just looking at your box rick. I think it's going to be your fifth fight out of South Africa. Uh, any regrets on that? Because you've spent, I think I was looking, the Emperor's Palace. You've done most of your career at the Emperor's Palace. It looks like an amazing venue, by the way. Yeah, not, not a bad venue at all. It's very nice for the local boxing scene. Yeah, that's where it happens and that's where it's hot. But obviously, it's always great to travel and, and put you out of your comfort zone. I think when you're out of your comfort zone is when you'll grow the most and, and develop as a fighter. So, you know, this will be my fifth or sixth time on the road. I'm not, I can't remember, actually. I think fifth. Yeah. <laughs> So that's that's good, man. And uh, most British fans will have obviously come across you for the first time when you obviously came and fought Daniel Dubois in the UK. Um, and you know, just before I even touch on that, I want I want the fans to know a little bit about you. I understand you've got you know, you've got two kids. You're a family man. Uh, you know, I think your wife does all your nutrition. I've seen that before as well. So you kind of keep it all in house. Yeah, yeah. I've got three kids now. Got so. Three kids. Yeah, I just have a little boy, he's 10 months old at the moment. But yeah, everything's in-house, you know, I've got a very tight-knit team. My head trainer, Peter Smith, you know, obviously I've got my conditioning coach, Pia. My missus helps me as best as she can with my nutrition and all that. And then, and for this fight, I brought in um, Maddie, Matthew Toey from, from the UK to assist me with my sports therapy, rehabilitation, prehab and that kind of stuff to stay injury-free. So yeah, like I said, we, we're giving it every opportunity to, to get out there and to give it our best shot. And uh, I'm a family man, but I'm a fighting man too. So I'm just looking forward to the opportunity on the 8th of March. What, what is it like in Johannesburg these days? You know, um, just as a country, is it safe? Do, pe do people still go there for tourism and stuff? Most definitely. I, I wouldn't really say the tourism hub is Johannesburg, but in terms of South Africa, it's Cape Town. Cape Town's a place to be a lot of... Uh, Europeans, British and uh, international travellers go there for the season, which is probably October, November, December, January. And a lot of uh, international people that go out there for holidays. So South Africa, is it a safe place? All relative. I guess there's problems and crime everywhere. But if you go to the good areas, um, you can have a really good time. It's a good climate here. It's a beautiful country. The quality of life is really good here. I like, I was watching your Instagram, I saw that you've been teaching your kids how to uh, handle weapons and stuff. And I think you worded it quite well. You know, it's the world's changed and you've got to be prepared for everything, especially if you can teach them the right way. Yeah. And so you're doing that. Especially, you know, especially when you're involved in, in, in the industry, you kind of, I'm kind of involved in, but out of boxing, you know, dealing with weapons and all that kind of stuff. You know, you want to teach your kids weapon safety. You know, it's, 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 you're not teaching your children to be killers. You're teaching them to respect the firearm and to how to handle a firearm safely so to prevent accidents from happening that's the biggest thing and obviously why i'm big on teaching my kids about firearms because myself my friends we're around firearms all the time so when kids don't don't think about something they will never touch it because they know what it's about and how to use it yeah i think british people we're, we're quite we find stuff like that what the hell but the cultures are different obviously in america south africa the, the laws are different so i think sometimes people fail to yeah. understand that uh, and the sure. other thing I want to ask you, Kevin, is like, you know, if from your opinion, what, what is the state with South African boxing? Because when I look back at the time when you came across to fight Daniel Dubois, and it's fair to say that most people saw your name, they would have gone on box rec and seen, right, this guy's for all his fights pretty much in South Africa. This is just like a fight for Daniel to keep busy. And you turned up and showed everyone what you was made of, you know, and you kind of stamped your, your name in, in boxing. So like, where is the state with South African boxing, do you think? Yeah, I think South African fighters or South African boxing as a whole does get overlooked quite a bit. Uh, we've got a lot of good fighters in the country, um, a handful of world champions. But if you just look now, I think uh, one of our young South African fighters, a flyweight, very, very small guy, his name is Sivanati Nonchinga. He just won uh, in Mexico, I think it was last night. And um, 
so we got we got talent. We got really good talent here in South Africa, but obviously people do overlook us and maybe they do overlook our talent and overlook our potential. But it's up to us as fighters to get out there and make some noise. And you know, obviously December third, twenty twenty two, I did my best to, to make some noise, you know, it didn't go my way, but we got an opportunity again. So we went on from that. We got two victories, beat Rod, Mary, beat Tagashi, and, and now we've got another shot at heavyweight um, in Saudi Arabia. And God willing, we get we get through this victory. Uh, we've got big things on the horizon, as promised. I'm just curious, what's it like to be in your position? Because when you came here, you must have seen people re, you know, saying, oh, this guy's just here, it's just an easy fight for Dubois. And what, what's it like for you reading all that kind of stuff about yourself, knowing that you're... Coming here with zero expectations. You know what? I think um, I've always adopted and uh, the B team mentality. You know, that kind of part of my success was always being overlooked in my whole career because remember, I've never had any, any amateur fights. So I turned straight professional at like nine, eighteen, turning 20, 19 years old, and we've got it. We've got this far by by doing that. So I know what I can do. I know how hard I work, and uh, it's it's very easy to be overlooked, but it's it's a kind of a it's a weapon for me because it drives me, it fuels me. So a lot of people when they come up against me or, or work with me, spar against me or fight me, they don't expect what I give to them or what I bring to them. So it's kind of a nice element of surprise, to be fair. And obviously on the back end of that, like you've said on that performance, you've got yourself this Saudi date and also you, you was one of the main sparring partners for Tyson Fury. Uh, I'm just curious, when you got the Tyson Fury gig, because um, obviously watching you fight, you don't, really fight like Usyk you know you're not far off but obviously you've got your own style I'll probably say you're probably more aggressive I'd say so what's it like when you go into a camp with Tyson Fury are you told to like mimic Usyk or do you do your own thing not at all really I'm obviously I can only do what I do best and I'm a come forward aggressive kind of fighter so I think Tyson had a couple of sparring partners, maybe like three or four that are used for different things. Maybe he'd bring me in when he needs a bit of pressure, when his coach wants a bit of pressure, a little bit of head movement, you know, a lot of head movement because I have to work really hard to get in on the bigger men. So a lot of head movement, a lot of work rates. So I think different strokes for different folks. Obviously, I'm not Alexander Osek. I've got a very different style to him. Maybe I'd say a more aggressive style, you know, aggressive head movement style, but that plays an important role in preparation because if you look at it, if, if Tyson's used to that, you know, and then a guy moving around, it kind of makes a similar thing of a guy not being in front of you. You know, very a lot of heavyweights, bigger guys, the taller guys, probably will stand in front of Tyson and, and, and trade off, you know, one for one because they're big men. But the smaller guys, we have to move. So Alexander Osik is a smaller guy compared to Tyson Fury. So he's going to be doing the same, maybe not like me and me not like him, but we're going to both be kind of aggressive in different ways. And then obviously when you're in camp, like you said there, there's other fighters that are sparring as well. Obviously, J.R. Patai was there for a bit and obviously Tyson. Obviously, knowing you guys and speaking to you guys off camera, but I noticed boxers have like, they're very different. Every boxer is different. And, but you all have this thing about you where you can all switch any second. And that's a common mm. thing I find in boxers. So what was it like that particular camp? You know, all them egos and all them people like, you know, do you get on with certain fighters more and do you kind of just stay away from certain people? You know, to be fair, I just I just come in and do my job. You know, I was I was getting paid by Tyson to be there, so I was there for Tyson to help him prepare. I was doing all the sessions with him, um, all the conditioning sessions, and then whenever he had spar, I'd be in the gym waiting to spar. If I wasn't sparring that day, I was working the bag myself. So I don't really get involved in the politics and the egos. Egos are to be left at the door because uh, in that square circle, egos will always get found out, and that's been my mentality my whole career. Just be a be a fighter, be a warrior. But uh, be humble when it counts most, and that's when you're outside the ropes. Inside the ropes, you've got to be a different type of animal. But on the outside of the ropes, when you're in another man's camp, you 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 be humble and you do you do your job as best as you can. You know. Uh, and I was speaking to Matt. He said, you know, you you're you're really dedicated. But he said you uh, uh I can't think he called you late Larry or something like that. But he goes, he's always <laughs> he's always last minute last minute Larry. That was it. Yeah. So. Obviously, we train very hard here in South Africa. We put in two to three sessions a day. And uh, I'm the type of guys, I know what I'm doing in the week, right? So I know the days I spar, the days I do, I got conditioning and running every day, whatever it is. But my times will change. I'm the type of person, you know, this morning I woke up at, at 4.30 because I had a long rest. And I said, I want to go train now. So I went, Matt, you ready? Let's go. That's what he means. You know, I'm, I'm the last minute Larry, but it's because... 
I don't like not doing anything. So when I wake up, I want to go get going, I want to get the day started. But obviously, what he means is like, I didn't tell him last night. So we went to bed at like 8 p.m., 9 p.m. He didn't okay. expect the early morning call, but that's how, that's how I operate, you know. That's, everyone's different. No, that's good, man. And obviously, been spending that time around Tyson Fury, um, because obviously when we may see people, uh, when we see Tyson on interviews, etc., you know, people see different sides to boxers. What what did you kind of learn about him as a person, spending all that time around him, you know, sparring, trying to punch his head in, and then trying to talk to him afterwards? <laughs> no, it's always good to to bump off ideas and and to talk to to guys who are champions at the highest level because they they have achieved something you still want to achieve. So it's good to to talk to them and to understand, you know. So speaking to Tyson was very easy. I must be honest, the whole entire camp, Tyson, Spencer, Max, Christian, Greg, uh, Shaker, they were all very, Jelena, all very accommodating, to be honest. They were very, very nice and very welcoming and uh, friendly towards me. So I, I, I told people when I got back home, you know, I haven't really been treated like that before. I was treated really well. That's good. And it, and it felt good. Yeah. And I'm assuming you're going to be joining back up with them once uh, your fight's out the way in March. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if they need my help, they'll call upon me, you know, Spencer Tyson, they got my number, then I'll be there. The last time I was there, I had to leave after 10 days because my mom felt very ill. So I had to fly back home. Um, but, you know, God willing, you know, we can get through this fight and uh, Tyson's got a massive date, May May 18th. So I'll I'll be happy to help him again, you know, and push him in not just the sparring, but the conditioning sessions and work really nice. We work well together. So I think it'll be good. And the last question, I'm assuming it was the first time you went to Saudi Arabia. What were your expectations of Saudi as a country and what did you see and how did you, how was the experience? Look, I expected it to be like a, I've, I've traveled to Dubai before, so very like built up in that, which I think it was. But um, the people that I met in Saudi were very friendly and helpful. I'm, I'm not sure if it's just the Riyadh season people or the people that were looking after us, but I did feel it was very helpful. It was it's a really awesome country, very clean. You know, you you got to be a law abiding there. And uh, for me, I, I like discipline and, and I love it. You know, and, and the Saudis are changing the landscape of sport, not alone boxing. So it's great for us sports. We know they, they're giving fighters big opportunity, but I think if you look at it collectively, they're giving sports so much opportunity. So it's really great. You know, I think that's where the landscape of sports is moving in the moment and uh, long may it continue. Good stuff. Well, Kevin, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. I'll probably see you next week in Saudi and uh, we'll catch up in person. Look after yourself, brother, and thank you for having me on your channel. And I'll definitely see you in Saudi. Cheers, champion. Thank you. I got a question for you. Where can discipline take you? Discipline points you towards your goals.